During the year 1997, Sony decided to update their controller for the Sony PlayStation so they can make the controls more fluent and precise in 3D fighting games like Tubal 2 and Bushido Blade. So they increased the size of the controller and added two analog sticks. When it was first released, a small majority of gamers criticized the controller for being too large compared to its predecessor. And in 1998, the marketing for the dual analog controller was discontinued and replaced with a new PlayStation controller, the Dual Shock controller. Controller, with not only the same analog sticks as before, but also included vibration effects whenever something happens to the player in the game. And in 1999 came a 3D platformer made by Sony Computer Entertainment Japan Studio that was the only platformer that required the use of the DualShock controller, Ape Escape. The story is about a white monkey called Spectre who finds a device called the Peak Point Helmet. When he puts it on, he becomes a more intelligent monkey and also has the ability to speak. He decides to use his powers for evil and create new helmets for other monkeys as his army to rule the world. I don't know about you, but Spectre kind of reminds me of Brain from Pinky and the Brain. Meanwhile, a ten-year-old boy named Spike and his best friend Jake rush to see the new time machine made by the Professor. When they get there, however, they find the Professor and his his granddaughter Natalie captured by Spectre and the monkeys, who then turn on the time machine which sucks the boys into the machine. With no other choice, it is up to Spike to catch all the monkeys from rewriting history and also save his friend Jake who has been brainwashed by Spectre. Now in Ape Escape, you aren't able to use the X, triangle, square or circle button to either attack or even jump. Nope, those buttons were only good for switching your gadgets. The first two gadgets you are given in the game are the Stun Club and the Monkey Net. The Stun Club is the weapon you use to defend yourself, and the Monkey Net is used to capture monkeys. The controls this time are heavily focused on the use of the DualShock analog sticks. The left analog stick is used to obviously run, and the right analog stick, by tilting it in any direction, will let you use your current gadget. For its time in 1999, this was ingenious. You start off in the hub level of the game, the time station, and once you enter a level, the game will tell you the certain amount of monkeys you need to catch. Once you've done that, you'll have access to the next level and do the same thing and so on and so forth. The monkeys in the game have pretty funny and clever personalities. Unlike other 3D platformers in the late 90s, Ape Escape doesn't have many boss fights. Instead, you'll be challenged by Jake and will be forced to race him through a trial which involves obstacles and platforming. During the game, the professor will give you new gadgets to help you in future levels. There's the water net, which lets you catch your monkeys in the water, the monkey radar, which helps you find hidden monkeys, a slingshot, which lets you shoot, the super hoop, which increases your speed for a short period of time, the sky flyer, which lets you reach higher places you can reach on foot, and finally the RC car. Now this is really innovative. Your health bar in the game is a 5 set of cookies and if you lose one you can gain another cookie by finding it hidden somewhere or defeating an enemy. In the levels you can collect small gold chips that can gain you ex extra lives or unlock certain minigames. Now, I will admit the game is not as challenging as other 3D platformers in the 90s, since the game has no point A to point B objective, but does that mean it's easy? To be honest, not really. Even though this game only focuses on capturing monkeys, getting to certain locations to capture them can be challenging at times. To me, the most challenging part of the game has to be the stadium trials with Jake, because not only do you have to beat Jake's time, but also avoid every obstacle in your path to keep yourself in the lead. As for the designs of the game, they're not the best I've seen on the PlayStation, but they fit the atmosphere of the game fine. The levels themselves are suitable for the innovation which makes the game simple. Everything is based on different time periods just like Crash Bandicoot warned. Just out of topic, I have to say how can you not notice a reference when a level is called Futurama? <laughs> The music of the game is what brings back a lot of nostalgia for most gamers. The music has a lot of techno slash joyful themes for each level to keep the theme of the game alive. The most memorable song in the game to me is the music of the Krabby Land level.
However, the game still has its fair share of negatives. First of all, the camera controls in the game are pretty weak. You have to use the directional pad or L2 to move the camera in the correct position, but to do that, you need to stay still to do so. This can cause a delay for the game, especially when you're trying to catch the monkeys. Back what many critics Spectre. criticize the game for Thanks. is the voice acting. I think it's just average at best, but there is worse to come in terms of voice acting in the series. Other than that, yes. out of all the games that came out in 1999, this one was one of the most unique and original. A true video game classic from the 90s. I give it a bag of tangy cheese Doritos, meaning great, I can play it again. And now we come to 2003. After the original Ape Escape became a huge hit, it was only inevitable that there was going to be a sequel. So Japan Studio gave us Ape Escape 2 for the PlayStation 2. Is this game an improvement over its predecessor? Let's find out. The story takes place a few years after the original Ape Escape where the professor has gone on vacation, leaving Natalie and Spike's cousin Jimmy in charge of the laboratory. The professor requests Natalie and Jimmy to deliver monkey pants to the monkeys in the monkey park. However, Jimmy accidentally sends both the pants and the peak point helmets where Spectre gets a hold of one and plots another plan of evil of dominating the human race. Jimmy, along with Papochi, a baby monkey, is now left to fix the mistake and capture all the monkeys and stop Spectre just like before. Wait a minute, if Jimmy is the new protagonist of the series, what happened to Spike from the original? There was no reason as to why he didn't reappear in the sequel in the original, so what happened to him? Anyway, later in the game, Jimmy will be confronted by Spectre's new team of monkeys called the Freaky Monkey 5, and will be forced to battle them in a boss fight. Now on to the gameplay. Okay, I'm gonna be honest, I can't really say much about this game. Why? Well this game almost plays exactly the same as the original Ape Escape. You still start off the game with the same two gadgets, the stun club and the monkey net, and all of the gadgets that were in the original Ape Escape are recycled in this game. The only new gadgets they introduced were the banana ran, which attracts monkeys with the smell of bananas, the water cannon, which puts out fire and activates puzzles, and the electromagnet, which pulls metal objects and platforms. Another new addition to the series is that they now have boss battles. You battle the Freaky Monkey 5 and at the end battle Spectre. The bosses are pretty challenging I'll admit, but not that memorable. And the final new addition is that it's more easier to buy health and other content by using a vending machine called the Gotcha Box in the hub area. Other than that though, this game feels like a PS2 remake of the original Ape Escape. And while some of the levels in the game are different, a few others look very similar to those in the original. I'm not going to go fanboyish and say that the game is great, because it certainly isn't the sequel I would expect to an already classic 3D platformer. I mean, look at other platformer sequels that added new features, improvements, and varieties than their prequels. But in Ape Escape 2, it's really underwhelming because the original Ape Escape was one of the most innovative games on the PS1. If you've played the original Ape Escape a lot, then chances are you know that the second game is little to no different from the original. I'm not saying Ape Escape 2 is a bad game, I did enjoy it, but if this is supposed to be a sequel, it has to bring new variety and features to the table to keep the series from being stale and mediocre. But enough about me ranting about the gameplay being the same, let's talk about the positives. First of all, I have to admit the soundtrack is one of the things in the game that is not disappointing. Most of the songs in the game are really catchy to listen to like this one. Like I said before, a lot of people dislike the voice acting in the first game, but the voice acting in the sequel is a little weaker than the previous in my opinion. Jimmy! What are you doing? You've gone over the weight limit! But anyway, despite many of the good things I've said about the game, I'm still gonna have to give this game a fair score. A bag of cool original Doritos, meaning nothing special but still good. It's not a classic, but a good buy if the original Ape Escape wasn't enough for you. And now we finally come to 2006, which in my opinion was a really mediocre year of gaming, because we had many disappointments to franchises in 2006. Back in the day, when I heard that the third installment of the Ape Escape series was confirmed, I was both anticipated and skeptical of it due to Ape Escape 2 being no different from the original. When I got the game, however, I was surprised to see that this installment of the series was more random and more anime-ish than the previous installments. 
The story begins with Spectre yet again returning with a new human assistant, Dr. Tomoki, and this time for his plans to dominate the human race. He establishes TV stations all over the globe for monkeys to broadcast TV shows, which puts humans in their mindless trance, including the Professor, Spike and Jimmy. We later meet twins Kay and Yumi who, with the help of their aunt Aki and Natalie, are forced to go through the TV stations and capture all of the monkeys and put an end to their hypnotizing TV shows. In Ape Escape 3, you now have the option to pick between characters K or Yumi, depending on which character you like the most. Both the characters' gameplay are pretty much the same. The only difference is, Yumi's gameplay has some monkeys who will fall in love with Yumi, which gives more of a chance to capture them. The gameplay for Ape Escape 3 has greatly improved from Ape Escape 2. Instead of introducing new gadgets, the new and biggest feature to the series is the transformation ability, where the character can morph into various personas like a knight, Cowboy, Ninja, Genie Charmy, and much more. At first I thought this was a childish idea, but what it all boils down to is that it makes the game more epic than the previous Ape Escape games. This is where the Ape Escape series becomes more action packed. My only gripe with this feature is that you're being timed on this feature just like a power up, and it doesn't last as long as it should. But if you collect small potions called MP, you can increase the timer a little more. Now the objective still remains catching monkeys, obviously. But progressing through the game, catching monkeys in this game can be a little more challenging than the previous games. For example, if you attack a monkey too much, that monkey will lose its temper and will not only attack you, but also make you drop your current gadget. And if that gadget is the monkey net, instead of you catching the monkey, the monkey will capture you and send you back to the hub area. Most of all, the boss battles in the game are also much more epic than the bosses in Ape Escape 2. You still battle the Freaky Monkey 5 again, only in a different style, and battle Dr. Tomoki near the end of the game, and the final battle with Spectre at the end of the game was probably even more intense than all of the other boss battles in the game. Another feature is that there are various film cameras around the levels which you can use to film monkeys doing a certain reference or action. Doing that, you can unlock a special feature of the game called the Simian Cinema, where you can watch movie clips of monkeys you film during the game, and also create your own monkey movies if you ever get bored. There are also new mini games to unlock this time, including a Metal Gear Solid parody called Metal Gear Solid, which was just hilarious. Another improvement in Ape Escape 3 are the level designs. I have to say the levels in the game remind me a lot of the Gex games, because most of them are based on movie parodies and pop culture references just like Gex, like fairy tale levels, wild western levels, and kung fu levels. One of my favourite levels in the game has to be the horror movie level, because it parodies many memorable horror slash drama movies like Friday the 13th and Psycho. Another favourite of mine is the Arabian level, which parodies movies like Indiana Anna Jones and Aladdin I guess? Eh, probably. Plus the monkeys in the game were outfits that also powered in movies and pop culture like Indiana Jones, Little Red Riding Hood, Jackie Chan and... Wait, wait a minute. So oh my god! It's Ratchet and Clank! It's Ratchet and Clank! It's Ratchet and frickin' Clank! <coughs> <coughs> Sorry about that. However, the biggest downfall for me in the game is the soundtrack. I did praise Ape Escape 2 for having a catchy soundtrack, but the soundtrack in this game has some forgettable and repetitive songs that annoys me throughout the game when I'm trying to capture monkeys. My least favourite level in the game has to be the airplane level, Shinobi Airlines. The music for this level just gives me a headache due to its repetitiveness. Jumping on airplane to airplane with the double jump mechanics just feels awkward. But the worst part of this level is the tank part. Controlling this vehicle is just plain horrible, and it gets even more torturous later on in the level where they throw more obstacles at you while you're still in the tank, which can easily end up blowing your tank up and you have to go back to square one. But other than those minor issues, if you were disappointed with Ape Escape 2 because of its lack of improvement over the original, then pick this game up because it certainly adds more variety and features than its prequels. Playing this game is a great reminiscent of the Gex trilogy, yet still keeps that random and addicting feel that we all love in the Ape Escape series. I give this game a bag of tangy cheese Doritos meaning, great and can play it again. It's hard to say if I like this game more than the original because it still has its ups and downs like the soundtrack. Maybe this calls for another video game battle.
Nah, I don't think I'll bother. But anyway, that's my review on the underrated Ape Escape trilogy. If you enjoyed this review, leave a comment below, and I'll see you all in the next video.